You're looking to move to Egypt or to another country? I've got the right video for you coming up inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yo, yo, it's your boy Abu Samara back with another video. If you've been on my channel before but you haven't subscribed, yeah, go do that. So let's just get into this video. So lately I've had people messaging me on Instagram, Facebook. You can follow me right here, by the way. And I've been getting all sorts of questions about how to prepare for moving, especially moving to Egypt and so on and so forth. So I figured this would be a great video for anyone who has the same questions or they're thinking about moving to Egypt or a different country. Now bear in mind that some of these tips I'm about to give can only apply to Egypt, but some of them can actually apply to moving to a different country in general. So without further ado, I never say without further ado, what's going on with me? Anyway, let's just get into it. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a tip that I've always been advising people with, which is learn to speak Arabic. Hello? Yes, um, Anna Eyes, uh, Wahid, 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 one, one. Anna Eyes, Eyes, I, I want, yes, yes, I want. Wahid full. Full. One second. Number one, it's just going to make things in your life a lot easier. I mean, if you're able to speak Arabic really well, communication becomes easier. When it comes to things like going to the bank to sort things out or ordering food or like just ordering whatever, if you're able to speak their language, then it just makes your life a whole lot easier. Secondly, although there are many people in Egypt that speak English, you're not always going to find that person. And even if they can speak English, there can be a miscommunication. So you're better off just learning Arabic just to make things easier for yourself and to make things easier for others. It's also just one of the best ways to dive into Egyptian culture and just really just, you know, just dive into it, I guess. I'm not really good with these things, I'm sorry. Now, before I move on to the next topic, it's very, very important that you understand that there are two versions of Arabic. I don't know if you can say version, but yeah, you have modern standard dialect, otherwise known as MSA, which is a lot more formal and you normally find that in journalism, in newspapers, news channels and so on and so forth. And then you have the Arabic, which is basically exclusive to that Arab country. So the Egyptian have their dialect and their Arabic, uh, the Saudis have theirs, the Emiratis have theirs, uh, the Lebanese and the Syrians and the Jordanians and so on and so forth. So you're better off learning Egyptian Arabic as the MSA Arabic isn't really spoken that much. So yeah, man, learn Arabic. Hello? Assalamu alaikum. Ahlan bik. Mumkin wahid full wata'amiya? Shukran gazeelan. You know what? I'm feeling a little bit hungry. Let's go see what's in my fridge. Maybe I can give you some. Or maybe not because it's food. I know sharing is caring, but food is... Yeah, sorry, can't do that. <sighs> Speaking of food, I highly recommend that you learn how to cook before you move to a different country. And these are my main reasons why. First and foremost, if you keep ordering takeaway, you're not gonna be able to save up as much money as you should. Secondly, it is a skill that I think everybody should learn to pick up. I mean, not only is it gonna benefit you, but if you end up getting married and you gotta take care of your spouse, then, you know, those skills are gonna come in handy. Now, when I first moved to Egypt, I didn't know how to cook. So most of the time I was just ordering takeaway pretty much every single day. And I ended up not saving as much money as I should have or could have. So I highly, highly recommend that you start cooking. I remember the first time my mother visited me when I was in Egypt and she just basically stayed for like a month and she cooked for the month essentially. And it wasn't until I got the salary for the next month that I realized I saved a lot of money because there was no need for me to order takeaways anymore. So if you can follow that same concept where you cook for a week or you cook for five days, you'll be saving yourself a whole lot of money. Right. I don't know why I have this. I hate Coca-Cola. I don't like it. So yeah, I guess um, I'm just going to have to order takeaways. Following my own advice here. Whether you're coming to Egypt to work or to study, 
I advise you to find accommodation near the place you're going to study or going to work. Now, first and foremost, you're going to save a lot of money on transport. When I first moved to Egypt, I basically moved into a flat that was literally, literally a two minute walk from my flat to my workplace. And because I was able to save up money on transport going to work, I realized that I had the opportunity to actually spend money on transport to go and do things I really like doing like karate training or just touring Cairo. It's also gonna make your life easier, especially, especially if you're gonna be staying in Cairo. Cairo is known for its traffic. I mean, I've spoken about it plenty of times before. And I mean, the last thing you want is to be stuck in traffic every day going to work. Traffic in Cairo is not like traffic anywhere else. So if I were you, try to find a place close to the place that you're gonna study or work. If you find that rent is a bit expensive, then try and room with someone so you guys can share the money on rent. Now, the reason why I say share is mainly because studio flats are very, very hard to find in Cairo. I mean, it was hard enough for me anyway. Maybe I, I wasn't looking in the right places, but it is difficult. This is the last thing I'm gonna advise you on with regards to accommodation. Find out if your workplace are actually gonna give you like a housing allowance or if they're gonna cover your rent or if they're actually gonna give you accommodation for free. Some places actually do this. So the place that I worked at, at the very, very beginning, I don't work at the place anymore, they gave me a housing allowance. So that obviously helped. Now the places that do give housing allowance, they will often give housing allowance for singles and then those that have dependents. And normally those that have dependents get a higher housing allowance, obviously. Did you know that in the 1800s, tomato sauce was sold as medicine? I don't know why that piece of information is relevant, but I was just doing some research. Speaking of research, it's very, very important that before you make that critical decision to move to a country, do your research on that country and try and get as much information as possible. I'm talking literally everything from expenses to the customs of the people, to the culture, uh, you know, the lifestyle there, anything that you can find out is gonna be really, really valuable. One of the worst things you can do is move to a country without doing the proper research and then regretting moving there. Now, luckily for me, before I moved to Egypt, I had visited Egypt twice and I had friends in Egypt that had lived in Egypt. So I was really, really fortunate to just, you know, have that piece of information just by, you know, talking to them on my phone. Now, as you guys know, some countries in the world have currently gone back into lockdown and flights have been suspended again and so on and so forth. So you guys don't have that luxury or the opportunity to go to that country and just get an idea of what life is like there. So my advice to you would be to research in another way. And if you want to move to Egypt, the best place to research is my channel, man. But in all seriousness, there are plenty of blogs online and there are people who have actually uh, made videos about life in Egypt and made videos about life in other countries as well. So the information is out there. You just got to research. <sighs> now, if you really want to make life easy for yourself, then I suggest you follow this one tip. Befriend a local. Even if you're introverted or, you know, you're too shy or you don't really like making friends, one of the best things you could do in Egypt is to befriend the locals. So obviously when you first move to Egypt, your level of Arabic isn't gonna be great. So if you befriend one of the locals, they can help you with translation and they can even help you with your Arabic by conversing with you in Arabic. And what I've learned from my Egyptian friends is that, you know, they give you important pieces of information about the country and just about life in Egypt in general. So they tell you the best place to buy your groceries, the best place to, I don't know, buy stuff, I mean, you know, like every piece of information that they give you is always golden and is always valuable. And they can show you some really, really great spots to hang out, great spots to eat, great spots for coffee and all of that stuff. So befriend the local man. Hello? Yeah, sahabi. Alhamdulillah, ay l'akhbar. Tab eh, haninzil in the harda wa li eh? Tab eh, hanroh fain. Begad? Tab yalla bina. I think I'm gonna end it there. If you have any more questions, then yeah, just hit me up in the comment section or hit me up on my social media. Boom, boom. And I'll be more than happy to answer you guys' questions. Once again, thank you guys for the love and support. Thank you for messing with my content and engaging with me. It's really much appreciated. This has been your boy, Abu Samra. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace. Did I again?
This is difficult, man. Hananzil in the harda wale. That's difficult, man. There's so many noons in there. Ah, oh, that's a tongue twister. Hananzil in the harda wale. I gotta sing it a little bit. <laughs>